Why do people born in developed countries commit crimes? Hi from Texas, USA. Like most people say here, you're missing lots of context. My husband is from Mexico and we have this conversation a lot. I live near a city called Dallas, where some of the richest people in the world, and a former US president, live. If you drive about 30 minutes outside the city is a small town called Sand Branch that still has no running water. The residents live in extreme poverty conditions. Between the two places you may pass multi-million dollar complexes next to homeless encampments. I would say you are correct in that if you are born here you probably will have many more opportunities than someone born other places. But only if you're born here in the right circumstances. If you're born here under the wrong circumstances. Poor. You're going to face some of the same exact challenges you see in poorer countries. You try to do honest work but life gets more and more expensive and you don't get paid enough. It's real easy to fall for the easy money that crime can pay. The aid you've heard of does exist, but you have to understand that each state acts like its own little country here. So how residents get that aid depends on how the local government wants to administer it. So if you're poor in a state that doesn't believe in aid, you won't see much of it, or you'll need to jump through a lot of hoops to access it. Personally, the only reason I don't do crime is that I'm not made for the prison life. Well, that and I had good parents who made sure I went to school. I am from South Africa and shared the same sentiment for a while. Until I started digging and realized the grass really isn't actually that greener. Recently traveled to the UK in a bid to look at immigration but after being there for a few monras. I realized that while the problems I had at home were gone, there were a whole new set of troubles. Life is good everywhere, but only for the wealthy. You are looking at the world as back and white. Everything is gray. Everyone's situation is different. Government aid isn't as easy to get as you are implying it is. Developed countries have a completely different set of problems. I get what you are saying. But you lack so much context. Most crime in developed countries, and I would imagine everywhere, is done out of desperation. You think you would come to a developed country and just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But it isn't that easy. The system isn't built for hard, honest workers. It's made for the people who are willing to do the worst things and exploit the most desperate people. It's not as great as you think it is context. I know being born in a developed country doesn't guarantee success. But 90% of the time, if you're able to work hard and apply yourself in a developed country, you're able to succeed. In my country, you could work hard and try your absolute best but that still isn't enough most times. Fellow Nigerian American here, this is certainly not true. Even in America, when my parents first came here, they had the same pov that those who commit crime in the US were either lazy, not committed to working hard, or weren't smart enough. However reality hit them when we started to interact with generational poverty in the US. A lot of people don't understand what kind of social, personal and economic pressures push people into violent crime in the US because to be honest, Crime is a very localized phenomena. If you live in the suburbs, or in the nice parts of the city, violent crime is mostly a fantasy to you. It's something you see on the news. It's something you see on social media. But rarely, outside of petty and property crime, something you experience in real life. I spent a year in Third Avenue in Seattle, South Detroit. In SE Washington DC and I learned pretty quickly that for many of the people living in these areas, they face enormous challenges from food insecurity, poor education and public funding, gang violence, divestment, permanent isolation, especially for boys and young men. Poverty can be extreme in the US, but most people are pretty far removed from it. 
but 90% of the time. If you're able to work hard and apply yourself in a developed country, you're able to succeed. This isn't true. It's propaganda that's telling people this. There are a lot of people suffering in developed countries too. I'm black British and I know a lot of people from Nigeria, the Caribbean, and other African nations with the same mindset as you. Or at least they had that mindset until they came to the UK and saw homeless people on the streets. The streets of Western nations aren't paved with gold. As a Nigerian the chances are you'll face racism in schooling. Racism encountering the police. Racism when applying for jobs. You know that nice degree that your parents worked hard to get in Nigeria. Well, it means nothing here. They may have to work a low-paying job and end up renting a place in a not-so-great part of London. Then they might have to get two low-paying jobs. Meaning that in the evening there's no one to help you with homework. Or even make sure you're at home in the evening. The unemployment benefits you're thinking about aren't enough to live on TBH. It doesn't cover your rent and food for the most part. And that's before the current cost of living situation where we are being robbed by energy and gas. Companies. I'm sure things look nice and easy over here. But they are not. They are far from nice and easy. And while the opportunities are there. Sometimes just having to deal with life means you can't take advantage of them. If you were born in the US there's a pretty good chance you'd be exactly where those guys are. The idea that working hard can provide you with a better life is outdated. No one really believes it anymore. The last 40 years have seen an unprecedented upwards transition of wealth. Regular people with jobs no longer get any value from their labor. Most people working full-time still can't afford rent and food and health insurance and student loan payments. The world is hopeless now even for people born in developed countries. I know being born in a developed country doesn't guarantee success. But 90% of the time, if you're able to work hard and apply yourself in a developed country, you're able to succeed. This would be true if the minimum wage was actually a living wage like it's supposed to be. Coming at this as someone who lives in an area with a lot of crime. Most of my fellow students, including myself, didn't make it through school for tons of reasons. It was common for gang activity for money. Since their parents either weren't there or didn't have enough. Some raised their siblings. A lot of people in low-income areas also know the odds are stacked against them. There's no big paying companies here. It's all fast food and minimum wage that isn't livable here. People can work over time on and off for 10 years and still have nothing left over after paying for necessities. It's still a form of privilege. But I see a lot of the same sentiments from the US lower class to the upper class. Also unemployment, disability, and food assistance aren't all that easy to get on or stay on. I'm disabled and I've been jumping through hoops for help for the last few years. Developed countries have poor people, drug addicts, mental illness, social issues, and can have poor social safety nets. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful I live here, but it's not a utopia. Mass inequity between people that have and those who have not. It is the same whether a country would be considered developed or not. Especially since many developed countries still do not take care of their people. Some do it for a rep. Some do it for fun. Some do it because they can. Some don it because they don't know anything else. Some do it to survive. But also, up. Here in America it used to be illegal for black people to drink from the same water fountains as whites. To sit where white people were sitting. To eat in white people's restaurants. To swim at white people's pools. Or to play in the same sports league as the whites. This is just the tip of the iceberg. They also used real estate laws. That are now illegal. 
but were common practice back then to separate the whites and the blacks. The whites got the good land while the blacks did not. Then there's the projects. The first projects literally kicked blacks out of their homes in 1935 AMD created a 600 plus housing community for whites. But for blacks, the projects, a term for a type of housing out here, was a literal human project experiment based off an experiment done with rats. At one point it was illegal for us to be anything other than a slave. There are quite a few people over here who wish things were still this way. Working hard means nothing. My dad worked his ass off in a factory and know what. They moved to Mexico because it was cheaper. He became unemployed then sick. He worked hard. Where his success that's apparently guaranteed. Outside looking in you're seeing the world based on what you're observing instead of being directly in the middle of it. US has the exact same issues as pretty much every country and watching it from the outside it might seem like things are better than they are and they are not. Mental illness. Unbearable cost of living. Family. Bad upbringing. Bad life choices. Peer pressure. Emotional reactions. The list goes on. We're all human wherever we are in the world. I am an American white female who is a stay-at-home mom with a one-year-old and live in the Wild West. That is Florida. We live off $70,000 a year before taxes. It sounds like a ton and when I was born, this could buy a house easily and credit was a relatively new thing. I pay a month. $1.1500 rent. We moved 30 miles south to afford rent in a decent area plus big enough space. $450 car payment. $200 car insurance. $250 electricity. Well water. More bacteria and had to install sink filter but free water except electric to pump it up. $50 Apple One Plus YouTube. Ms. Rachel Yall. $150 cell phones. $60 internet. Equals $2660 and take home is $4000 a month. Don't forget I have gas to put in the car for 5x week commute 30 miles, 45 minutes each way plus gas. For all our errands we can't have delivered. Prescriptions. Doctor appointment copays. And groceries. We spend an astronomical amount on groceries. I just had two teeth pulled because we forgot to add me to my husband's dental plan this year. The cost was $900 in total that we had to borrow from family and we were lucky that we had someone who could help us out. This is why people turn to crime. You can't even make it on $70,000 a year for three people anymore and we've cut back everything we possibly can. For a lot of reasons. Money relationships, mental health, imbecility, people who want to take advantage of something, etc., 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 yay, being from a development country doesn't guarantee success, maybe is more easy than for the majority of us on third world countries but there are poor and struggling people everywhere. Your standard for what life should be like increases the wealthier you get and the better conditions you have. You become entitled to better conditions. Learn to put in less effort into things demanding more things or put in more effort into things and become a blind spot for society and get stressed out. People who turn to crime do so for a long list of reason. In this case because they don't understand how privileges they are and how they constantly compare themselves to THR people over them instead of the people below them and that jealousy takes control of their emotions in the short or long run and changes them. This is just scratching the surface. The very poor focus on survival and having something to eat. Moderately poor live paycheck to paycheck. Needing multiple jobs to support themselves. Middle class focus on trying to get even more money and building a family and so on. 
the rich focus on business opportunities and building a company and such. All have their own things to worry about and when things go downhill it brings the worst out of people. Also simplifying it. As other people say, the idea that you can just work hard and or smart and succeed in a developed country is just not so true. For people already in a place of privilege, this is true. For the already impoverished, no. Places like America do a great job at oppressing both minorities and the lower class as a whole. And this keeps cycles of crime going. In Canada the statement, but 90% of the time, if you're able to work hard and apply yourself in a developed country, you're able to succeed, is nowhere close to even being true. If you enjoyed this video, Please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.